Tonight, top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Labour set to avoid promising EU referendum in general election manifesto and EU rules mean children can't get life-saving cancer drugs. Uruguay and Brazil prepare a two-speed Mercosur EU trade negotiation. Britain's too ignorant for EU referendum. Plus, Euro flood, drowning the Somerset levels. We're delighted to be back. Thanks for joining us. Just a couple of announcements. The unit have taken an exhibition stand at the UK Independence Party conference in Torquay. Andrew, Trevor and myself will be there. It would be great to see you if you're in the area or going to the conference, then do drop by our stand. Of course, that means there won't be a nightly news on Thursday or Friday of this week. Some of you have written in to ask us to tighten up the show as it's running a little too long. So we're going to try and do that. So without further ado, here we go. It's Monday, 23rd of February. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Labour set to avoid promising EU referendum in general election manifesto. One likely consequence of the European elections in May will be to reopen the debate over whether Labour should commit to holding an EU referendum at some point after 2015. Despite consistently criticising David Cameron's pledge, Ed Miliband and Douglas Alexander have been careful not to rule out the possibility of eventually matching it. Now, it beggars belief that these political fools believe that at this point, not giving the people of Britain a vote on their assimilation into the European federal superstate is actually a valid course of political action. Why might that be? Well, a new source of information has revealed to us that Devon and Cornwall Police have now opened a new position for chief executive. But to rub salt in the wounds, internal staff have been told that up to 10 frontline positions will be due to go because of the cutbacks. Meanwhile, the salary for this new CEO position is over £100,000 a year. That's equivalent to four full-time staffing positions. Now, it's going to require a revolution at the ballot box in May to get the UK out of this mess. EU rules mean children can't get life-saving cancer drugs. Children with cancer are being denied access to potentially life-saving medicines because European Union rules allow drug firms to waive the need to test some drugs in paediatric trials, researchers said on Monday. Calling for a loophole in EU legislation to be closed, scientists and specialists in childhood oncology, led by Britain's Institute of Cancer Research, said changing the rules could extend and save many young lives. Many cancer drugs developed for adults could be effective in children if we were able to test them in clinical trials, Louis Chesler, an ICR researcher and paediatric oncologist at London's Royal Marsden Hospital, told reporters at a briefing. Now, whatever your position on this, and the question is a difficult one, but surely, in the first instance, the rights of the children are the responsibility of the parent. And secondly, how has this legislation got anything to do with trading rules? Well, clearly it hasn't, and the EU has not the consent of the people of Britain to legislate in this way. These are decisions that should be the responsibility of our own Parliament. Uruguay and Brazil could be prepared to go ahead with a two-speed trade negotiation between Mercosur and the European Union if the Argentine tariff proposal is not as ambitious as that from the rest of its members, according to Uruguayan diplomatic sources. Mercosur members are supposed to meet this week in Caracas, Venezuela to make compatible the different tariff reduction policies. Of course, things are looking pretty fractious in Caracas right now, which might slow things up. And one connects the dots, you can then see a pattern emerging. These trade deals are little different to the common market deal undertaken by Britain and Europe in the 1970s. Ultimately, negotiations are being played by the globalist corporations. What stinks about all of this is that the contents of the trade deals are secret and the people have no influence or voice about them. 
Of course, the flip side is that all of this folly just adds more weight of proof to people like Steve Keen when they debunk the Keynesian economic theory of free trade, this Keynesian economic model having become the world standard, but is a theory that in actual fact observations prove to be broken. Britain are too ignorant about Europe to vote in a referendum on the subject, a top Brussels official claimed last night. Vivian Redding, vice president of the European Commission, said the British debate about Europe was so distorted that people could not make an informed decision about whether or not to stay in the EU. Well, well, fancy that. We never expected that the EU vice president would come up with the notion that the good folks of Britain have been so confused and bamboozled by the topic of democracy and the idea of a referendum on the EU that she has decided it would be better all round if we didn't get a voice at all. Now listen here, Miss Redding. We in Britain know a thing or two about how to run a democracy on account of the fact that we invented it. Ours is the oldest democracy in the modern world. And I believe that also puts us in the ideal position to point out that your European implementation of it is broken. You have no opposition, no retrospective recourse, your diktats bind in perpetuity, and your policymaking is done in secret with ministerial councils, deeply influenced by paid lobbyist groups you call think tanks, and your executive commission is internally appointed and cannot be empowered or deposed by the people. So perhaps we in Britain are significantly more informed than you believe. Perhaps it is you who is ignorant. A big thank you to Stephen Paris Ward, who wrote to us on Google+. In his article, he details a trail of policy and legislation that must carry substantial weight in the reasoning behind how the Somerset Levels flooding has gotten so out of control. The European Union's Natura 2000 strategy, along with a sheaf of directives on habitats, birds, water and not least the floods directive of 2007, specifically requires certain floodplains to be allowed to flood. And in 2008, when the Environment Agency was run by Baroness Young, this was reflected in a policy document which classified areas at risk of flooding under six categories, ranging from those in policy option one, where flood defences were a priority, down to policy option six, where to promote biodiversity, the strategy should be to increase flooding. The Somerset levels were covered by policy six. Now, I highly recommend reading through Stephen's work on this. It really is eye-opening stuff. In our video library today, I wanted to pick up on the topic of immigration and to explain how and why it benefits no one. Now, having worked with Hugh Scudder on the Christian Response to Eastern Europe project, I have seen this firsthand, how society and communities get hollowed out by foreign immigration policy. Andrew Fear, our webmaster, found this excellent piece of film presented by Roy Beck. Some people say that mass immigration into the United States can help reduce world poverty. Is that true? Well, no, it's not. And let me show you why. This gumball represents the one million legal immigrants that the United States has taken every year on average since 1990. Now, who in the world deserves our humanitarian compassion? The World Bank has one measure of the desperately poor of the world. They make less than $2 a day. And how many people make less than $2 a day in the world? Well, let's start with Africa. In Africa alone, there are 650 million people who make less than $2 a day, 650 million. And in India, another 890 million people, desperately poor. China adds another 480 million people, making less than $2 a day. And unfortunately, the rest of Asia has a heartbreaking 810 million people who the World Bank says make less than $2 a day. And finally, there's 105 million of Latin America's population that are desperately poor. All told, the World Bank says there are 3 billion people in the world, 3 billion people who are desperately poor, making less than $2 a day. That's 3,000 gumballs. And every year, we take a million and suggest that we've somehow made a humanitarian difference. Of course, 
We don't pull our immigrants from these desperately poor populations, do we? These people are too poor, too sick, too disconnected to make it here as immigrants. We tend to pull our immigrants out of the better off poor of the world. And Mexico tends to define the type of immigrant that we bring here because the plurality of people come from Mexico. And Mexico is poor. How many people in the world live in countries that have average incomes lower than that of Mexico? And the World Bank tells us that that number is these three billion plus another 2.6 billion people. 5.6 billion people in the world who live in countries with average incomes below that of Mexico. That's 5,600 gumballs. And so what is it that the elites are telling us? They're telling us that when we take this one million immigrants, that we somehow or another are tackling world poverty. And we have to do it regardless of the effect on our unemployed, the working poor, the most vulnerable members of our society, regardless of the effect on our natural resources. Even if we went by the most radical proposals in Washington, which are to actually double our immigration to two million a year, which would totally overwhelm our physical, natural, and social infrastructures, we couldn't make a noticeable difference. And we may be really hurting the impoverished people of the world because the million that we do take are among the most energetic, often the better educated, certainly the most dissatisfied people that if they did not immigrate would be the agents for change to improve the lot of all the people in these countries. The true heroes in the global humanitarian field are the people in these countries who have the wherewithal to immigrate to another country but instead stay in their countries to apply their skills to help their fellow countrymen. Unfortunately, our immigration system tends to entice these very type of people to abandon their countrymen. The impossibility of making even a dent is actually worse than it looks here because Last year, when we took one million immigrants, these countries added, births over deaths, 80 million more people into the impoverished population. And this year, Congress is bringing in a million legal immigrants. And this year, according to the United Nations, these countries are expected to add another 80 million people. And next year, you can be quite sure that Congress unless stopped by the American voters, will bring in another million immigrants. And these countries, unfortunately, will be adding another 80 million people into these impoverished nations. We could take five million a year, but we'd never get ahead of what's happening in these countries, not in this century. Don't you see, immigration can never be an effective or significant way to deal with the suffering people of the world. They have to be helped where they live. 99.9% .9 of them will never be able to immigrate to a rich country. There's no hope for that. They have to bloom where they're planted. The only place that 99.9% .9 of these people can be helped is where they live. Let's help them there. Now, personally, I think that is an excellent example of why immigration policy is doomed to fail. The people it is supposed to help and doomed to fail the nations that implement it. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.